Hello everyone, my name is Loco, I'm a Zerg player for Team Quantic Gaming, but today we're not gonna do anything Zerg related. Today we are going to take a look at Zerg vs Protoss from the Protoss point of view. I know, right? Uh, today we're gonna be having a look at Netawa's Zerg vs Pro or Protoss vs Zerg rather, um, build order that he executed versus Quantic Yun in the dream hack. I believe it was like two or three weeks ago and obviously he got really far into that tournament for anyone wondering. I'm not gonna spoil the results but um, he played insanely well and we are going to take a look at a push that he executed on this map called Neo Planet SLE. Now for anyone wondering, I'm normally a Zerg player but I really do enjoy doing my off races and like playing other races so um, it's, a, it's a lot of study for me as well so personally I'm enjoying this and hopefully you will as well. Now the written build order uh, will be in the description of this video so if you're up for that and also the replay uh, you can just simply hit the link right there and it will take you right to the build order and the replay but other than that we are going to go over the build order in complete detail. Now the goal for this build order is to play super safe. That's the first part, okay? We want to kill the Zerg at the, some point in the game, but we want to do this very safely. There's no reason uh, why we are not doing that. So we are going to try and play it super safe. We are even going to make a Zealot. I will show you that a little bit later. Uh, but we're not going to let that one finish, just in case if our opponents open up with an early pool. So first of all, playing safe. Second of all, the push that we want to start doing is right around the 9-ish nine, minute mark um, and we want to be pushing with two immortals and a whole lot of zealots with plus one attack. Now this is the actual goal of the push. Why 9 minutes? Why with two immortals? Why not with three? Well, Zerks actually have been adapting quite well in Heart of the Swarm to the immortal sentry all in. So there has been a bunch of new attacks that Protoss has been executing lately and this is one of them. Why 9 minutes? Well, it's exactly when the Zerg player is still making drones and he really doesn't have any units and also it's insanely hard to scout this thing coming from the Protoss player just because the Zerg usually will be able to allow uh, droning or is allowed to drone up until at least nine minutes into the game. Um, now what we are going to push with is two immortals in a warp prism and from that warp prism we are also going to be warping in a lot of plus one zealots. Why plus one zealots? Because probably you know this, uh, but zealots are basically 50% stronger versus zerglings uh, when they get plus one attack. Normally it actually takes three hits for a zealot to kill a zergling, so it's like cha cha cha, okay? Best impression, impression of a zealot ever. Uh, but when they get plus one attack they only need to do cha cha, so it's two hits instead of three. So. Um, Zealots with plus one attack are insanely strong versus Zerg, especially right around the time that this push comes in. So let's have a look at the engagement that Nanoa goes for. So here we go, this is eight and a half minutes into the game and this is what we are eventually going to be aiming for with this build order. He's going to be having uh, two immortals in this war prism right now, he's going to drop those off and he's going to be warping in a whole lot of plus one zealots and we can speed this one up uh, for just a little bit and you will notice probably how it's gonna go because the Zerg player is not prepared for it, he was pretty much unable to scout it and then it will just, uh, we'll just simply overrun him and as you can see all the work is up pretty much going down. Now since we are pushing with a lot of zealots and only two immortals, we are basically not needing that much gas at all. In fact, we are only going to get one gas for this entire push. Also, uh, like I mentioned, we are going to be playing extremely safe, so we don't want to be dying to pretty much anything, um, you know, that is common in the current metagame of Zerg. Um, and also, this build order is relatively easy to execute because Nanoa basically sits back in his base and he plays it safely, but he does not scout, he does not do much at all, um, so yeah. So here we are in the actual build order. Nanoa opens up this build with a 9 pylon. Once the pylon finishes, he chrono boosts the Nexus and he obviously is going to be making a gateway at 13 supply. On 14 supply, he will be taking the gas geyser. And a little bit later, on 16 supply, he will actually rally a drone from the Nexus and build a pylon with that one. When the gas geyser finishes, he instantly puts 3 probes right in there. And once the gateway finishes, he instantly follows it up with a cybernetic score. At this point, Nanua actually wants to go for an expansion, but since he's not scouting at all, as you can see on the minimap, no scout is going down whatsoever, he doesn't know if his opponent is going for an early pool. Because of this, he is starting up a Zalot, just in case, but he's actually not going to be allowing this one to finish. Now, let's say an early pool would be coming into the main base, he would obviously let this gateway finish up the Zalot, and he would simply um, let it finish up, but if it turns out to be not necessary, as you can see at 200 minerals, he sends a probe to the low ground, he creates that into a next and he cancels the actual zealot. Once the cybernetic score finishes, he instantly starts the warp gate upgrade and as you can see, there is still no second gas. At 100 gas, he starts the mothership core after starting the warp gate upgrade. 
At 24 supply, he actually creates a pylon on the low ground to create a little bit of a wall off. At 100 gas, he throws down the robotics facility right in the main. And he uses the same probe that he uses to create the robotics facility to create a forge on the low ground as well as a gateway. Once the nexus on the low ground finishes up, he actually uses probes from the main base and sends those straight to the natural. Keep in mind, up until this point, he's only producing probes 100% of the time. Once the forge finishes up, he instantly starts the ground weapons level plus one upgrade, but he does not chrono boost it whatsoever. Once the robotics facility finishes up, he instantly chrono boosts out a war prism, and he uses this one to scout. After the war prism comes out, he starts saying immortal right away, and keep in mind, War Prism scouting is cool, but in this actual game, Manoa doesn't scout anything with his War Prism whatsoever. And once he can afford it, right before finishing up the first Immortal, he throws down 5 more gateways, which will add up in a total of 7 gateways. And once he can afford it, he will also start the second Immortal as soon as he possibly can. Once the second Immortal pops, he makes sure that the War Prism is back home, and he uses that one to actually load up both of the Immortals, and as you can see, plus one attack is about to be finished up, as well as all the seven gateways, and he obviously morphs all of these into warp gates right away. He then goes ahead to push out with the two Immortals, and with the mass Zealot warping that he will be able to kill Yon with. While he is doing the push, as you can see in the minimap, he added more and more gas geysers, and he's also starting the fourth one in his main base. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Pretty easy build order to execute. Keep in mind, you're just trying to be super, super safe. And what I would advise you to do is simply open up a custom game and practice this build like 10, 15 times, um, as long as you need it to do it absolutely perfectly before you actually go on the ladder and try this one out. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the description. I will try my best to answer them. Um, also, I will put out regular content for StarCraft 2. So if you're interested and you enjoy the videos, please hit the subscribe and the like button and you will be notified as soon as you get a new video in your inbox. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye! So here we are in the game. Now I got a, a bunch of bases going on. Uh, as you can see I got a bunch of macro hatcheries as well. I got queens injecting. Let's inject with that. Um, and 